Now that I have your attention, the next question is, uh, how do I read it? How do I make sense out of it? Well, for how good you can be assembling Swedish furniture, this instruction manual is nothing you can crack in your life. And so, in 2014, uh, two famous Tedster, Peter Diamantis and Craig Venter himself, decided to assemble a new company, Human Longevity was born, with one mission, trying everything we can try and learning everything we can learn from these books, with one target, making real the dream of personalized medicine, understanding what things should be done to have a better health, and what are the secrets in this book. An amazing team, 40 data scientists, uh, and many, many more people, a pleasure to work with. The concept is actually very simple. We're going to use a technology called machine learning. Okay? So on one side, we have genomes, thousands of them. On the other side, we collected the biggest database of human beings, phenotypes, 3D scan, NMR, everything you can think of. Inside there, on these two opposite sides, there is the secret of the translation. And in the middle, we build a machine. We build a machine and we train a machine. Well, not exactly one machine, many, many machines to try to understand and translate the genome in a phenotype. What are those letters and what do they do? It's an approach that can be used for everything, but using it in genomic is particularly complicated. And little by little we grew and we wanted to build different challenges. We start from the beginning, from common traits. Common traits are, are comfortable because they are common. Everyone has them. So we asked, started to ask our question, can we predict height? Can we read the books and predict your height? Well, we actually can, with five centimeters of precision. BMI is fairly connected to your lifestyle, but we still can. We get in the ballpark, eight kilograms of precision. Can we predict the eye color? Yeah, we can, 80% of accuracy. Can we predict the skin color? Yeah, we can, 80% of accuracy. Can we predict age? We can, because apparently the code changes during your life. It gets shorter, it loses pieces, it gets insertions. We read the signals and we make a model. Now an interesting challenge. Can we predict a human face? This is a little complicated because a human face is cut around million of this letter and a human face is not a very well-defined object. So we had to build the entire theory of it. We had to learn and teach a machine what is a face, an embedding, compress it. And if you are comfortable with machine learning, you understand what is the challenge here. Now, after 15 years, 15 years after we read the first sequence, this October, we started to see some signal. And it was a, a very emotional moment. So what you see here is a subject coming in our lab. This is a, a phase for us. So we take the real face of a subject, we reduce the complexity, because not everything is in your face. Lots of features and defects and asymmetries are coming from your life. We symmetrize the face, uh, and we run our, our algorithm, okay? The results that I show you right now, this is the prediction we have from the blood. Now, wait a second. In these seconds, your eyes are watching left and right, left and right, and your brain wants those pictures to be identical. So I ask you to do another exercise, to be honest. Please search for the differences, which are many. The biggest amount of signal comes from gender, then there is age, BMI, the ethnicity component of a human, and scaling up over that signal is much more complicated. But what you see here, even in the differences, uh, let you understand that we are in the right ballpark, okay? That we are getting closer and is already giving you some emotions. This is another subject that comes in place, um, and this is a prediction a little smaller face, uh, we don't get the complete cranial structure, but it still is in the ballpark. This is a subject that comes in our lab, and this is the prediction. So these people have never been seen in the training of the machine. These are the called held out set, okay? But these are as well people that you will probably never believe. We are publishing everything in a scientific publication, you can read it, but since we are on stage, uh, Chris challenged me, I probably exposed myself and tried to predict someone that you might recognize, okay? So in this vial of blood, and believe me, you have no idea what we had to do to have a blood now here. So in this vial of blood, there is the amount of biological information that we need to do a full genome sequence. We just need 
this about. We run this sequence, uh, and I'm going to do it with you, and we start to layer up uh, all the understanding we have. So in the, the vial of blood, uh, we predict that it's a male, and the subject is a male. We predict that it's a meter and 76, the subject is a meter and 77. We predict that it's 76, the subject is 82. We predict his age, 38. The subject is 35. We predict his eye color, too dark. We predict his skin color, we are almost there. That's his face. Now, the reveal moment is that the subject is this person. <laughs> and I did it intentionally. I am a very particular and peculiar ethnicity. Southern European Italians, they never fit in models. And, uh, and it's par particularly that ethnicity is a complex corner case for our model. But there is another point. So one of the things that we use a lot to recognize people will never be written in the genome. It's our free will. Here's how I look. Not my haircut in this case, but my beard cut. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to just, in this case, transfer it. And this is nothing more than Photoshop, no modeling. The beard on the subject. And immediately, we get much, much better in the feeling. So why do we do this? We certainly don't do it for predicting the height or taking a beautiful picture out of your blood. We do it because the same technology and the same approach, the machine learning of this code, is helping us to understand how we work, how your body works how your body ages, how disease generates in your body, how your cancer grow and develop, how drugs work, and if they work on your body. This is a huge challenge. And it's a challenge that we share with thousands of other researchers around the world. It's called personalized medicine. It's the ability to move from a statistical approach, where you are a dot in a Gaussian, to a personalized approach where we read all these books, and we get an understanding of exactly how you are. But it's a particularly complicated challenge. Because of all these books, as today, we just know probably 2%. Four books of more than 175. And uh, this is not the topic of my talk, because uh, we will learn more. There are the best minds in the world on this topic. The prediction will get better, the model will get more precise, 